Hello, infidel. Infidel. Hello, infidels. Country road. So quick, I'm going to do a quick video on St. Francis of Assisi. Now, this is the uh, Franciscan cross, this famous cross. Um, it's a little different from the Benedict cross. This is the Benedict cross. See the differences? One's more sort of a cross and an icon almost. This is more famous, I think, in the West especially. But this one's this one's made in Italy. Uh, this was the cross, so so I'm told. So we read where Saint Francis went into the church and looked at this cross and heard a voice, either from the cross or from somewhere, <laughs> that said, "Francis, build my church." And Francis thought it literally meant to to um, fix the church up. So he fixed this church he was visiting up, famous church, uh, San Damiano, and, um, but the man, he found out later the message of the Lord was, um, build my church spiritually from within, and, um, and then of course he created this great Franciscan order, and Lady Poverty is there. You know, they don't own any possessions, and, um, well, I don't know if they don't, don't own any possessions, but the idea was, they actually went around this group, it was so radical, they, they, um, you know, depended on, on, um, God and people to supply all their needs, but they preached the gospel, and, and Francis said, preach the gospel at all times, if necessary, use words. So it was more of a of sort of a sacrifice, sort of a um, of a physical icon of the way you should act as as Christ's servants, not having a lot. You know, it's really a countercultural message to our to our culture here in the U.S. You know, the Franciscans. It's it's um, and there's nothing wrong with material things. As long as they don't become your God, right? As long as you're generous. Paul said that in, um, I think it was in Timothy or something. Is if you're, if you're, if you have a lot, you know, just be generous, he said. But Francis had a special call. Now, he was raised in a, um, a home, sort of a wealthy home. His father was, was a businessman. And Francis, you know, was a popular guy, apparently, and very, uh, you know, just having a good time in his teens, late teens, I think maybe even into his 20s, and then he had this conversion. I don't know if he met a leper or something where he just had a great conversion, and then there was this conflict between his father and, uh, and himself. Now, let me go to myself for a minute. I'm not comparing myself to St. Francis, but I remember when I first said I wanted to go to Bible school to my, um, my mother was excited, but dad wasn't very happy about it. But that was years ago. But anyway, Francis, um, he, he, uh, he, uh, he went to, you know, he went against his father in, in a sense. And, and, um, because he really was countercultural uh, with with what he did, and um, and he um, you know he became really one of the greatest saints uh, of all time. You know he's like rivaled up there with with Paul and and the San Francisco. The city is named after uh, Saint Francis. They came through those missionaries. Uh, those Spanish missionaries, and they set up a bunch of those, um, those, uh, 
missions all along the California coast. I got one here I go to in uh, in San in San Rafael, and and it's right in the center of town. They got this beautiful mission, San Rafael, the mission of San Rafael, right in the middle of the town, and. Um, it's a beautiful, I go there sort of, um, you know, it's less than, it's like a 30 minute drive for me on, um, you know, over on the, over the Richmond Bridge, the Richmond Marin Bridge. And um, I go there and, you know, they got a little bookstore. Um, this was before too, you could order everything online, but, but you go there and then they had like the little chapel with, uh, a chapel, they got the church, but then they have this little, like, really unique chapel. It's really old chapel. You go in there, and it's a really, and they have special services there for um, different, different language groups. And then there's the main, I've been to the mass in the main one. That's San Rafael. They got them all starting in San Diego all the way up to this one here in Northern California. But uh, the one in San Francisco, or they named San Francisco after St. Francis. And, um, but in closing, I just want to say about Francis is, uh, is um, he, uh, he was big into this theology, this sort of this earth-centered theology, creation-centered. Now, you know, he was very in line with the church, in line with orthodoxy. He separated God from creation, which is what we should do. You know, God made all things. But he saw also God in all things, sustaining all things. So he would call, like, uh, he would say, Brother Moon, Mother Earth, Sister Stars. He had this kind of language, but it's very... Um, it's good. It's something the church needs, too. You know, you, you got to realize that the cosmic side of God, the environmental side of God, the side of nature. And we know Francis is famous for nature's love of birds. My family loves birds, too. You know, we're big birders. I have birds. Uh, I've got, um, I've said before, I've got uh, red-shouldered hawks nesting around here. I've got a pair of doves nesting. I get great horned owls at night uh, nesting in these pine trees. I don't know if they're nesting, but they come into this area at night. Uh, I guess there's good food around, but um, and uh, keeps the rodent population down. It's really important, these things. And then um, I've got great stellars, or not stellars, scrub jays come in. I got of course, you're mockingbirds. These are all neighborhood birds. But you got, you know, like I said, you got two birds of prey right here in the neighborhood. The, the red shoulder hawk and, and the great horned owl. And, um, and Francis would, you see, he had that, you know, he loved nature and he brought God in nature and nature in God. And he had a healthy view. And I think we need to be more the leaders the Christian church, like Francis, the leaders of the environmental movement or conservationism. It doesn't have to be political. There's a lot of politics involved. We all want to preserve the earth. But Christians, because God made all things, and separate from all things, but he's also sustaining all things. It's something precious. And he gave us, you know, we sort of made us shepherds as well to serve the, the earth. It, in, in a certain extent, and not to just, you know, lord it over, but to, you know, to bring out the best in, in what the earth has. You know, God made, God gave us that, to do that. And, um, and it's the same type of thinking with, you know, when, you, when you're a boss, you, you don't want to just lord it over people. Uh, you want to also serve the people you're you know, you got to get the job done, but at the same time, you uh, you want to be, you know, a servant. And it's the same way we should be with, with the environment as well. And I, and I think we need to get back to St. Francis, get back to some of the cherishing this. And, and the church is in, in some ways, but we're sort of lagging behind the world. We should be the front runners in the conservation movement in honor of, of saints like St. Francis. God bless. Hey, like and subscribe.
God bless you.